Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Dombas and I welcome you to our 27th uh, video tutorial lecture for uh, creating a complete inventory management system. I hope you've been following from the very first video up to this level. So we're going to resume from where we stopped in the previous video. So you know, you always do 40 minutes. So I'll go ahead and start my counter. Start my counter. All right. So last time uh, we stopped at this level whereby we were able to create the financial periods model and then you're we able to create this button for adding financial periods. So when you click here, you have um, a form for adding a financial period. So this is the step where we stopped at where someone could be able to enter here and then we collect the data on the changed. So right now we're going to proceed from there where we're going to add now the logic of, um, I mean, we're going to add the remaining fields. So I've already opened the project and I've already, I've already run the project. So it is running. So I've finished the name field. So we're going to go to the uh, date field. Okay. So to go to the date field, so I'm just going to duplicate this uh, form builder text field. And then I duplicate it to come up with a uh, date picker. So I'll come here and copy it and then come and say, uh, so it's going to be um, date, uh, it's going to be a start date. Okay, so I'll copy this name as it is here, start date. So I'm going to put here, start date. So I'm going to come here and put a uh, form builder and I remove this one and I put uh, date form builder and I put what I call, there is a uh, date date range picker let me see this date range picker how let's do with the first this person so let me see what this date range picker does so it takes the first date so i'm going to put here the first date so first date is going to be uh the date or the most minimum date so it can be maybe the first day should be now so can put now and then the last date it can be maybe like uh uh the next year like the form uh, the, for the, the 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 financial period should be not be more than maybe one year something like that so you add like here yeah, uh a whole a full year then after doing that uh we go ahead and you put here unchanged so unchanged to collect the start date and uh So let me first see what this one does. So it takes the first date and the last date. So when I say say, I mean when I say save, what does it do? Let us first see what it uh, brings uh, from what and the changed value. So I'll come here and just uh, dump what is here and the print and then put here. Uh, so it has the start dot to string. Let me see what it gets. Let's see. So it can be null and then put here dot last. Okay, I think it's last. Okay, it has last, first and end. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see that. Let's see that. Mm -hmm. So I'll come in and try to check this and put this and then say save so you have the first and the last date okay that's very good all right so let's let's now put this together so this is called uh form because the new field i don't usually use it so it's my first field to use right now it's my first time to use this field so it will have uh the date range so it's going to have the first date or the most minimum date so I can say maybe the most minimum update it can be maybe like uh, uh, years ago, maybe like uh, uh, subtract, maybe we can put like maybe uh, one year ago, at least minimum like of one year ago. Okay. Let me put here that now, I say put that subtract and then you put here duration. I can put here maybe. Uh, duration 
days and then we subtract one year ago and then we add like uh, one year ago so i mean one year in front so it should be like uh, the difference of like two years okay so that's going to be the range so if i save here now when someone clicks here so the most minimum time it will be like one year ago so when the financial period is beginning and then the last or the most min maximum time should be like a plus two years ago if i make it like uh, two years so you can come here and put maybe two times uh two times what times that and then if we also maybe uh, span it like two years back you can come and put two times that so that would be like uh, the start and the end date then you come here and collect the when 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 it changes okay so when the field changes unchanged so you come here and say go ahead and collect the, the the beginning the start date and the end date so to get the start date you just simply do like this so it's going to be uh widget.item.start uh start date okay so when the financial year starts so we shall come and collect uh value dot what dot start so you may first check if the value is not null so if you say if val if val is equal to null you return so you don't check something that is null so you can return like this so if you do like this you can just simply come and put here like this and then put the string so it will be okay there okay so you come and collect the start date and then you come also collect the uh end date like this put that in and then like this so you'll be able to collect the first and the end date like that okay so you come here and put this pick and say maybe uh financial period range okay maybe say maybe uh financial period uh date range okay so when it starts and when it ends that should be the name so you can make it uh, uh validate and make it required and then you remove this one the minimum and the maximum like this okay so this one will handle the date logic so if i save and someone clicks here so it will give them this kind of a range so they can say here the start and here maybe the end like this and then when they click save it will be saved so uh after doing that so now i can come here and put uh, the what the size box and put like this see size box and put maybe 20 so it should have uh, the space between them we can put maybe 25 Okay, so we can have them some space between them so maybe i can put here now initial initial value i don't know how it's going to take okay so this is how you take the initial value let me see the initial value it's being taken okay so it takes an array of uh, let me see let us see what it takes so initial value let's let me see what it takes as initial value so initial value So it takes this out, take the initial value. So initial value is going to be date time range. And then here you are going to collect if it is now and and but here the initial value is supposed to come from um, the view date from here. Okay, so we're going to create a function that is going to be changing to be checked to getting the, the, the start date. I mean the, to be getting the date from uh, the string to the value. So let's create that function in our utils class. This is a utils class where we put our utilities. So we can put uh, something that's going to be returning this time. So I can put here maybe say from string to date to date time. Okay. So we are creating here our functions called it has date time and then say we shall we can call it to date. So to be collecting that string and then after it's going to be used to uh, convert uh, the date from string uh, back to what back to the uh, to date and time okay so let's go ahead and try so you do here 
try and catch so it passes this date that you shall have passed here and then return so if it returns if it is null you return i mean if it, if it fails it runs the current time so you can also try to put here or you can maybe return null i hope this one is loud okay so maybe you can put here maybe uh, dynamic so come and uh, check here if is uh, if this go to null we return null okay so that's the function that you're going to be using uh to do what to uh it's the function that we're going to be using uh is the function that we're going to be using to do what to to convert from string to date okay so here here we come back to the form so you're going to call utils dot to date okay so here i'll just write my function in uh, come okay come okay so i say to date so I, I import this and then i come and put here widget so remember our our data is in widget dot item dot start date like this and then i put comma and then i put dot end date so i hope you can see that so this one will help us to uh, pass the first and last date okay let's save and come back and see if it will not throw an error oh there's an error it cannot be null so it will return the now time so if it is empty it should return the current time okay so let's come and just make this one strictly the time so that is good so if you come here now it returns by default the now time okay all right so that's good that's good so you can see that and then you can use the function that converts the range the, the dates you can pause the video and look at it all right so let's proceed uh let's proceed so after doing that so this is going to be working with the date range now uh, the, the financial year when it starts and when it ends like this then you can click on save then to go ahead and and do what and put for us that field so i think the start and end date so the next thing is the what the start and end date is all is over then the next thing is the status uh so status is going to be a radio picker So let's begin by separating these. So I can just come and pick, for example, this one. I just pick this first one. Eh? I'm going to change it. So I'll copy, come and paste it here. So I'll come and change this one to radio. Hmm? It's called. Um, So this one is called form builder radio group okay form builder radio group so it's going to take the name of status and then initial value is going to be the status value and then here on change we check the what the status value okay so it will take whether it's active or inactive let's go back to our back end code and see which exact states that we use there for financial pickers so let me open here my project so we can be consistent Okay. So status we used active and inactive. They begin with capital letter, okay? 
so i'll come back and come here so it's going to be active active and then inactive and inactive so let me explain to you this it is called a radio picker so it takes um uh, it can give you this option you can have a radio like this one so it takes uh the option so option is an open array i mean it, it open squared squared uh, squared I, okay an array which is going to take form builder options okay so form builder option it has what you call value and the what and the child okay so this value is uh what you want to be collected and then the child is what what you want to be shown so there are the options okay so we have here two options the active and inactive and then here we put the decoration it's going to be status of the what of the year and we make this field also what also this field also required all right so that's the status maybe the lastly last is now the what the description so description is going to be just a um, form field so I'll just come here okay i'll come here and i put the description field field for description all right so I'll come there and then i come and put a uh, description so it's going to be just like that so it's just like a normal field only that maybe i can give it here what you call max lines of three of four and then mean lines of maybe two or three so you should have that kind of enough space where someone can type so that is how we have organized our form uh, for collecting the financial period information okay so after doing that now we're going to put our button of submit mm, so someone can be able to do what someone can be able to save okay so i'll come here to a column and create here um sized okay size widget so i'm going to put here submit what submit button okay so it's going to be so i wanted to have a big button Just trying to design this button. All right, so yeah, that's the kind of button that I needed. Um, I think that's fine. Mm -mm 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 OK. 
Okay. Oh, sorry, that's a simple submit button. Okay. Good, good. All right, so on submit, on submit, on submit, you're going to call the validator. Okay. So the validation. So you see, uh, on submit uh, here, we just say, uh, okay, so I hope you, can, you have seen how I've created the submit button. It's just an elevated button that has this child, which is a text that has this kind of style. And then it has this, the, the submit button itself has a what? Elevated button dot style uh, from. And then we have uh, these styles that we have put there. So when someone clicks on submit, when someone clicks on submit, uh, what we do, uh, we call... Uh, form key dot current state dot validate okay so you can put here dot validate dot save validate or can save save dot validate like this one is enough so if it fails the validation okay so if it fails the validation you can you put here the note eh? so put here the note if it fails okay so if it is failing okay then you go ahead and and do what and make a return okay maybe you can put here maybe some utils dot toast Hmm. I do have this function for toast. I don't think we do. We called it what? I think we had uh, that function. I don't think we did there. All right. So, all right. So, if it fails, it will automatically uh, tell someone uh, that something is wrong. Okay. So it will validate. So that's the advantage of validation. Okay. So if someone comes here and try to submit, you see the validation that we are adding, it will automatically do uh, validate. And if there's anything wrong, it will go ahead and put those things in red color and then go ahead and uh, put that kind of warnings. Okay, so I'll return and make sure that it does not proceed from here. Okay, so after that, the next thing maybe we can go ahead and submit the form. But it can be good to maybe uh, show a pop-up to ask someone if they are sure they want to uh do what to, to submit so you can just simply say get dot what dot default okay default put here default pop-up default dialogue this one here and then ask the person uh whether they want to do what to submit okay so that's it so i can put here description i think it has title and then it has you want submit so alert so maybe confirm So, we give, uh, so this is when someone confirms to call this one let me keep it an empty and then on cancel i'll also go back like this all right so let's check this So confirm text, text confirm, you can put yes, and text cancel, you can put, uh, text cancel, you can put no, or if you can put maybe cancel, okay, cancel like this. All right, so this is an a dialog box or a pop-up. So if it passes the validation, you can just, will show this pop-up, okay? So let me show you. So I'll come here and come and put maybe... 20, 23, 2024, 20, and then come and say maybe this one will start on uh, 
on January 2023 and it will end uh, 20 maybe 31st December 2024 okay something like that so if I save this they say eh, the month first eh? So if I save this, so that is the date range. So I said it is active, maybe uh, details for this. Uh, so that's it. So if I come here and submit, you can see, are you sure? So that's the alert that you've just created this one here. This is the pop up. So if I say cancel, it will cancel it. So let's remove this on cancel. We don't put this pop up. Let's remove this back. Otherwise, it will go ahead and take you back. Okay, so yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and put there just for testing. And then I put there and make it active just for testing. So submit a issuer so I can say cancel. So if I submit and I say yes, it is calling uh, this method, okay? So this one here. So I can put now uh, go back, okay? So we just go back like this. Okay, we just go back. Alright, so let's go ahead and try submit. So when you say yes, submit. When you say yes, it just cancels it okay so now when i say yes here i want now to do the logic of submitting okay uh so i can now create a function uh, so I first go back and then i create a function called do submit okay so this is this function we're going to put the logic that is going to send this data to the internet so let's go ahead and create that method so create a method here so you create a method so it's a method okay it's going to be asynchronous all right so uh, this method is going to look much more like the one that we did on the when someone is logging in So the first thing here we first get uh, You know every time everything was changing we could get the changes. That's why I put on change So you have to make sure that every field has what on change listener so you can get the change every time something changes So it means that now if I come here and I try to print um the widget with item dot dot to json i should be able to see all my data that will have changed in the what in the console so let's go ahead and submit and say yes you see everything that i have it has come in the console so right now i've not changed anything okay so let's see uh the the, the name it is here it is there the date and the first and end it's not there because we just have the default okay so the status active and then the description it is there so everything is fine apart from this um uh the date okay uh the date so i don't know how we're going to come <laughs> to go around it because we need also the initial value so let's say that uh let's say that the date the date are not going are not being validated okay so let me check if let me say valid date validate okay so if the date is empty at the first and end then i say please select the valid date range okay and then i i go back something like that okay so that's it so let's go ahead and press submit say yes so you see please select the valid date range something like that all right, so that is how we validate the date for now. You can see it. All right, so after doing that, now let's go ahead and uh, and show the loader. I mean, and do the logic of uh, of submitting. Okay, so I assume that everything is fine. Uh, now we go ahead and uh, submit. So let us first see what we expected to submit on the what on the server. So if we come to our API, if we come to our API. This is a financial record create so on the create so these are the things that we expected to submit okay we expected to submit the company id company id we expected to submit the start date the name the start date and the day end date and then the status and then the description so company id is almost going to be in everything okay it's going to be in everything almost that we're going to be submitting so it would be better if we make it uh, constant somewhere so that every time we submit we submit the company id so let's go ahead and do now that logic okay 
So now um, uh, we are going to write the logic of submitting. So let me first explain to you something here. So if you come here to the login screen, okay, so let's go to the login screen and I explain to you something. So if you come to login screen, we had to write this uh, geo post and then we just expected the response, okay? So it will be better if we write a single place that is going to handle everything here and just be returning us to us the response, okay? Um, yeah, so that will be really uh, better. If we create just a single place, well, we shall be giving it the post data it will do this whole logic and just gives us the what uh, the response okay so let's see how we can do that okay so i'm going to put um to put to put our utilities so uh let's okay so at the end of the day we shall need something like that is in this format So you see that our response is kind of standard. At the end of the day, we shall need something that is in this format that has the code, the message, and the data. Okay. So for example, you see the code is this, the message is that, and then the data. Okay. So if I go ahead and yeah, so that is uh, let me use the local one. So go ahead and send. This is the online one. So I see I get the message, the local and the data. So let me first try to serve. Okay, so let me try to serve and we see how it looks like on the. Put in the local. Submit. So you see, we have the code the the message and the data okay so it will be good that if we, if we can have just one response model that will always give us this other than for us again uh, keep on writing this the headers the what every time okay so what we're going to do we're going to create a model so watch this very carefully uh so we're going to create a model that is going to be handling the responses okay so I'll come here and say new and then create here a model that I'm going to call response model. Okay, response model and then the dot. So it's going, that's going to be handling all that logic of fetching the data and then returning back the data in that format that you expect. So it's going to be class response model. Okay, so it's going to have three main uh, fields. Okay. So it's going to have uh, it's going to have the integer integer which is going to be the code and then it's going to have uh, the what it's going to have let me make this one not final it's going to have the, str the string is going to be the message and make this one zero by default and then it's going to have the data the data which is going to be dynamic i think to make it dynamic yeah it can be list can be an object All right we can make it let's make it a string let's make it dynamic because sometime we don't need it again to convert back yeah let's make it dynamic all right so this response model to call it you can so you can put here now maybe it will be getting the data 
from the raw data can just simply put here uh, dynamic and let's say raw just raw data so to call this so uh so you can maybe let's just call just raw so to call this one you should always give it uh, the raw data this this dot raw okay so let me remove this okay this one final so by default I can make it now all right so yeah so all right i think that's okay so that's the json i mean that is the um, the raw data so when you call this you have to give it the raw data it will first check if it is not null if it is null to return back then after it will go ahead and pass the integer okay so if it is not a map if it is not a map if it does not contain a map it will return back uh, if it does not contain a map we can go ahead and uh, try to change it let's put here from json so it is a map it go ahead and uh, we do what we initialize the row we get the raw data we get the code from the raw data we get the response i mean the message and the data so uh this one it will be working on uh, uh response or getting for us the responses from the internet okay we get it uh, so now after doing that now we're going out to try to test it okay okay so this response mode we're going to i'm going to show you how we are going to use it eh? I'm just going to show you how you're going to use it. But you here you should just know it is having our code and then the message and then the data. So it's going to help us just to do what it's going to help us to 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 process things. Okay, it's going to help us process things. Okay, with simplicity. Alright, so after doing that, now let's go ahead and uh, you can pause the video and look at it. Let's go ahead and now come back to our financial period. So this financial period, it's literally going to submit uh this let me show you okay it's going to literally submit that data to uh to the login okay i mean sorry to the to the to the http so let's come to login and just borrow this what you did here at http and then we see how we can just make use of it okay so let me just come here and copy this okay i'm just going to explain it i'm going to explain it so come here now put it there so here i let's have let's have here the error message so the error message is going to be string and then you put here uh, make it nothing by default okay so let's go ahead and display it here if it does not if it contains something let's go ahead and display it on top of this okay okay yeah let's display it here so i'll check if if the error message is not empty i go ahead and display it so you can look at that method there okay if the error message is not empty see i'll display it. if it is empty i'll not display it all right so come back to a submit function so this submit function it is here 
so it is go ahead and we show a guide and show the loader we have already gone through this and then here we have our response which is going to be null and then here we have our response is going to be do dot so go ahead and import the do okay let's go ahead and import do so that is how you import the do so i'll come and import the do here so i go ahead and make a http request it's going to be do did not import it so come and put here do as sorry this has get as do I think yes yeah, okay so you come and make this on asynchronous and so the asynchronous so is it complaining I have to create this deal object here. Okay, so we we'll go ahead and do the deal object, and then we say try, and then we say await deal dot post. Okay, so we we'll go ahead and put the base URL, and then after the base URL, you know the base URL is the our endpoint where our project is hosted. So after doing that, we we'll go ahead and put the what? We we'll go ahead and put our endpoint of the creating financial period. So to create the financial period, we have our endpoint here. We have our endpoint here, which is this one. It's called financial period. Okay, so I'll come here to a project here. So I'll just come here and put financial period. Since our endpoint to already have the word API in it and the forward slash, so I just add financial period. So here we we'll go ahead and put the data. So this data is supposed to be a JSON. So since we have a function that can convert our object, this object, to JSON, okay, so it's what we're going to call, okay. So I'll come here, I'll just simply come and put a widget. So I'm going on top there, collect the widget dot item dot to json so this will convert it to what to json then we can go ahead and add the headers the headers and then the content type so this is what i'm going to simplify and so we can make it much more simpler than this and then we go ahead and make a request and then whatever comes back we put in this uh, response model and then we hide the loader okay and then uh, we can go ahead and put uh, what came back okay from this response okay we can go ahead and put uh, if response is null we'll go ahead and we we'll go ahead and put the error and just put the error and uh, make this error to be equals to uh, response is null okay something like that uh, so if it's if it success i can go ahead and say print and see what has come back response data okay so you can see that so let me explain it again let me explain it again let me explain it again so uh, let me explain it again so here uh, we validate the dates okay here after I make sure that the date is valid we go ahead and show the loader and then we reset the error to make it zero nothing and then we go ahead and create our response uh, object which is going to be null by default and then we go ahead and do the HTTP, create the DO HTTP. Then we go ahead and do the HTTP post and wait. And then we pass here the base URL and put the, the endpoint. And then here pass the data. So this data, we just call this to JSON. It's going to help us to convert this object to JSON with their respective values. And then after, we go ahead and say options. We pass the headers, accept the JSON like the way you know and then after we check if it fails we get we put it in the error and do here set state so it can be able to to display for us the error okay and then after we go ahead and hide the what we hide the loader and then check if it is null we go ahead and make and get this error and then 
I think this one will be overwriting the error on top. Huh? Yeah, it will be okay thing. So we say it has failed because then the error I put it there. So if it is if it is okay, we can put here just uh, print. Let's just display and say success. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we've got now. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on submit. Yes. So, and please enter validate. Okay. Submit. So it will lower issue. Yes. So it will process. Ah, and then we can get our what? Our error. So you can see the error is 404, bad exception. So the error is very straightforward and clear that the request has ended with 404 so our uh, http request is not uh, going to the right so the the, 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 the the link is not correct so let's go ahead and re revise the link so the link is stroke api so let's come back here and see our endpoint so this one had api so we have to add another api okay so you can be able to target the other API if you still remember. So you have to add API. So I have to add here another API in order to target this uh, dynamic what? Dynamic model. If you still remember the other dynamic model. Okay. So I'll have to add the other API again. So they can have be two APIs. Okay. So let's go ahead and clean and try to submit again. So to load. So it is successful. It is successful. But you see the message is clear and authenticated okay the message is clear that it is an authenticated and the error code is zero so there we are so i want now instead of me doing the logic of checking if it is not null what and what all doing doing all those things i want to be giving this uh to the response model and the response model should do all those stuff for me so I can just get, I can just, just check the, the model. So let me just copy this one as it here and you see if, we, if this response model can do this work for us. So let me just come on top here on the submit button, eh? just on the very submit button here, even before the validation, we want to test, just we are testing. Eh? So I'm going to just create a response model object response model object i'm going to just the resp equals to response model object it is expecting something so let me just pass it uh this let me pass it okay let's pass it just an object like this and we see how it will perceive this object again we shall also pass it a string and we see how we shall how it will perceive it okay so you see I'm just passing it an, an, an a JSON object, the response model. All right, so let's see what it will bring us, which, what it will bring us back. So I'm just going to come here and say return. So let's see if it will be able to get the code and the message. So let's go ahead and put a print and then say response model dot, dot code, okay, dot code, uh, dot message, dot data. Okay, so you see if it will be able to behave and return for us some good stuff. So let's go ahead and clean. So I'm testing the response model that we just designed. Okay, so if I click on submit, you see it has brought the correct code. It has brought the correct what? A message. So if I try to put here maybe some data here. Let me put here some data, something like that. Maybe name. Go to John don't do something like this so then i just put some simple data there and see if this response model will be able to <coughs> to behave and return for us something that is relevant there's some error all right something is all right i've broken something and it will break i think it's this one okay
Okay, I think that's fine. Okay, so let's see. Can this response response model behave? So you see, it is behaving. So it is even returning bus as the voter. So what if we 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 convert this to JSON to string? Okay, let's convert like the whole thing to string. Okay. So if we convert even it to string, also oh, there's a <laughs> there's a problem. Okay, when it comes as a string, there's a problem. Let's see if we can uh, fix that. Mm, so we check here. Um, let me come here and and uh, so I think I have just do JSON JSON decode and do like this from JSON. So we can first check if M is null. I think that, that. so just put here from JSON. Eh? We convert from JSON. We can use JSON dot decode and then you convert this one. So here I think here if it is a string, eh? if it is not a map. Let's see. Oh, there's still some error. There's still some error. So and this error should be coming from here. From here. Okay. Hmm. Say it has to be if it does not contain. I think, yeah, it has to be here. If it does not contain a map, then we have to decode it first. Let's try and see. Okay. Let's convert this one to JSON and make it to string JSON. Dot encode then to string Let's try and see. So if it goes even if it goes in string format, it is able to do what uh, to return back as the hard the right data now what if it goes in a format that does not you see even if it goes in json it returns the data now at it, let's try to put it back and see if it, so if it goes in the right json it returns the correct thing so let's try to to give it again back the json that is in good format still okay so and give it the json that is in good format uh, let's see what the error is, where the error is coming from. Mm -hmm. Map is not subtype of string. So at this point here. Yeah. Let's first put and see what is the run type of this. So the run type is JSON. Okay. Okay, so I think here we just need to, to add it to lower. Yeah. So it is checking and the other word map is in capital letters. So I have to put here dot two lower case. Yeah, like this. Thank you. So if it is a map, it will just encode it directly. If it is not a map, it will just do it like that. Right, so let's try to submit you see everything is okay so even if it is a map or a string it is fine okay 
All right, so let's try again to go back and make it a string. It should be fine again. Yeah, so that is fine. So now let's try to send back something that is not so of course in this map even if you send an empty map still it will behave it will not throw an error so everything is okay it is throwing an error so let's go ahead and fix this okay so of course this map cannot exist you cannot have an empty map okay so if i have to send like this something that does not have any value it is throwing an error so let's go ahead and see what is causing this Invalid. Okay, so I think that's that's enough for us to validate. We can just always try a crawl. Uh, sound if this try and catch. Uh, after all, we create our API with. Uh, so let, me, let us try to send it an empty string and see because we have to make sure that there is minimum errors so it send an empty string there is an error okay so let's go ahead and fix that so we check if it is null we return okay so if it is null we return okay let me try to return from here and we see and we see if there's any error if it is null so okay this is okay so it is null we return the way it is okay so we go ahead and check if it is a uh, run type of does not contain map so i think this is the one that is throwing an error if it's not a map um if it is null we return so we can go ahead and check if uh so from json okay So you have to first try and code and decode it. If it is not a map, just on decode. Okay, so here it is trying to decode it. All right, so this one you have to surround it with what? With try and catch. So let's check if it is empty. Let's check here or if it is empty. So you just check here if it is not a map, so it may be it may be it is string. So you check if it is empty. That that the string that is empty. We return from here, and then this one. Let's try the sound it with the try and catch. Try. catch so they will have like as minimum error as possible okay so let's try this one as well try and catch so we can have as minimum error as possible yep so they will have like no errors so you see everything is fine all right so let's try to send back now something that has sense and see if they still have some valid things so everything is okay let's try to send there some that has sense so so the code is zero though the message we did not get it did you just spoil everything Wasting our time, eh? The message isn't coming. Let's try to send the code to one and you see. So it is not sending it right. Okay. Let's see. So this is an object. So it checks if it is if runtime does not contain map. does not contain map so let's check from here it's taking a time so 
so it's not a map yet it is a map so let's see what is this runtime exactly what is what is it showing like it's saying it's not a map yet it's a map let's try to see what it is showing So I said it is a string. Is this a string? Are we sending a string? Yeah, we are sending a row or a, an invalid string. So that is okay. So let's go ahead and remove this. All right. So this is an invalid string, of course, because we're not passing it into JSON. Okay. So it is it is right. So let's send a valid string. So the message is okay. So it's trying to send a now a valid string. The other one is a valid JSON object. So JSON dot JSON JSON dot encode and then we put this. So if we send a JSON string, everything is Some string that to string right so so this is now the point here so if string is empty so we try here try and catch try sorry this one decode it's supposed to be from JSON here Like this okay yeah i think now that is fine now yeah so that is okay now all right so uh yeah so that is it that is it that is it let me explain this and wrap it up so it cannot confuse you but this is like it's going to save you a lot of headache in future you're going to see all right so let's just wrap it up so if i send a string everything is fine if i send a non string less an object i mean like complete string everything is okay if i send an object still everything is fine so i'm going not to explain this let me just put everything together so this response model is going to help us to work on the logic of uh, converting the text checking every time whether something is valid or not you can even use it in even new multiple projects so it is like this let me explain how it is so it is just a response model it has the the, the, the code it has is it is, we call it what status code let's see our object code okay so it has the code whether it is one or zero it has the message that has come from the from the online it has the data okay so this data is done that the data that has come from internet okay so it it has now the raw data now the raw data is what you give it okay which is dynamic so when you call it you give it the a raw data this raw data can be in form of json it can be in form of string so to check if it is null if this raw data is null then to return these default ones okay to return so mean that we'll just call the default ones so the code will be zero the mirror the error message is be nothing and then the data will be null okay you can just make this one data null but this is just a repetition okay so it will go ahead and check if it is a map okay if it does not contain a map so you know that it is a string okay it is a string so you check and first put it back to string so if it is a string that is empty we just return the default values so you check if it is not a string that is not empty then we try we try to do some from json and this is json in code I mean it's json decode so we try to convert it from json de decode and then we see if we recognize it and then we call our from json here so this from json to check if it is null to return the default if it is not null it go ahead and get the code the message and the what and the data and it is in try and catch so if there's an error any error it will just return the default okay and it returns in case that it is successful and if it is if it is not if it is a map then it will just go ahead and just do the, the decode the normal from map okay 
and then return so you can use even you can just even call here the from what from from, from map and then give it raw i think it will just be the same thing i hope <laughs> it will be the same thing so that is uh, how you can do this so this response mode is going to help us to see how we can parse we can be passing uh we can be passing our http requests okay so that is it so this is where we're going to stop at today okay so tomorrow or in the next lecture we're going now to see how we're going to break this http into a, a method that we shall be calling in one line so because this we're going to do a lot of things uh, by sending things online and offline so it will be very good if we we don't feel the, like feeling bored to send a http request the http request should be very simple to send imagine if we can just write some just one line like this in order to send the http request let's say how many lines are these one 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 two three four five six seven eight nine nine ten and also checking if they are valid or not so they are around 20 lines that we need to write in order to check if something is valid if something is not valid and if there's any one change you have to change all so i want to wrap all these 20 lines into one line so i just want to do so I'm, i want at, by the end of tomorrow's video the next lecture i want us when you send the re response to so just put here resp response model equals to response and then just put maybe and then maybe http or whatever function that you call is going to be like util.http post so our post you just put here what you're going to power to post so I can say maybe item dot to json and then we do like this and then you specify the endpoint just one line and then it will do the whole logic checking if there's an error check if the internet connection is on or off and then we just for us check if this one the code is one we display the error if the code is i mean if the code is zero display the error if it is one we proceed to the next thing so that's what that's what i want us to achieve so it is boring but once we finish this you can even use it in so many projects so at least right now we have achieved this response model so tomorrow we shall now work on the http so the http of get and post we just write only one line and then to work on the whole logic so that's where exactly we shall start from in the next lecture so make sure that you practice this and you understand right now they cannot make sense but in the next lecture when we will connect all these dots you'll see like now everything is making sense and you will be able to understand everything all right then let's meet in the next lecture we are going to do now the http requests and uh, the post and the get and we see by use of one line and you see how we're going to build this thing at a very high speed all right so all these techniques you're going to need them you're going to need them in your programming skills all right that's it for today and uh, i wish you the best make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel make sure that you practice and make sure that you understand everything okay and goodbye